Good morning, everyone. It's always place your cross on first. You know, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what you're going through, putting that cross on plays a huge part in your walk as a follower of Christ. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for giving me another chance to get it right and grow as a follower of Christ. I should continue to keep our watch over my wife, our children, our grandkids, Lord Jesus. All those who we come in contact with throughout the day, Lord Jesus. As you to send word to us, whatever words you want us to hear. And I hope you... Use us to send forth words to others. Because guess what, Lord Jesus? We got to be able to listen. Lord Jesus, we got to be able to listen. So, I ask you to use me today. As you see fit to bring forth whatever word it is you want me to bring forth so it can bear fruit for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I'm going to read it from um, Exodus chapter 35. I mean 34. I read it in regards to the story of patience. You understand? I'm going to keep reading in Exodus. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone, like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. One thing you're going to learn about the Lord, he's very specific in his instructions. If you read about how the instructions he gave for the tabernacle and the outfits for the priest, very specific. If you read the instructions for Solomon's temple, very specific as you can see God is a God of specifics and no man shall come up with thee let any man be seen throughout all the mount let the flocks nor herds feed before the mount instructions and he hewed two tables of stones like unto the first and Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto the mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tables of stone and the Lord descended into the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. So if you read the Old Testament, you're going to see a lot of the New Testament in there. Long-suffering. Where do you think that comes from? The Old Testament. Goodness and truth. Old Testament. Mercy. Old Testament. The New Testament just says it in a different way. It's the exact same thing. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving inequity and transgressions and sin. As you can see, God has always been a God of forgiveness. For people who don't want to read the Old Testament, well, you see the Lord there. He's the same Lord. Same talk. And that will by no means clear the guilty. By no means clear the guilty. Visiting the inequity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generation. You don't believe in generational curses? Well, there you go right there. If you don't believe, you might want to read again. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us for this stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for thine inheritance. As you can see, God is forgiven. He's very merciful. He's very gracious. But he also said, Forgiving the iniquity and transgressions and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty. He's not going to clear you. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. For this terrible thing that I will do with thee, observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite and the Canite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. Whether thou goest, lest be it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Now watch this. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. He's very specific in what he wants his people to do. Why? For thou shalt worship no other gods, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. He's a jealous God. He didn't appreciate the golden calf. He didn't appreciate that. Let thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifices to their gods, and one called thee, and thou art eat of the flesh sacrifice, and thou take of his daughters, and to thy sons and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. Let's go back to what he said. 
forgiving iniquity and transgression of the sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, vision and iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children into the third and fourth generation. Reiteration. And thou take their daughters and to her sons and their daughters a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, as I commanded thee, in the time of the month of Abib. For in the month of Abib thou camest out from Israel. All that opened to the matrix is mine. And every firstling among thy cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. But the firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou redeem him not, thou shalt thou break his neck. And all the firstborn of the sons shalt thou redeem. And none shall appear before me empty. Six days shalt thou work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest in er earring, in earring time, and in harvest thou shalt rest. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of the end gathering of the year's end. Thrice in the year shall all your men, children, appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before thee, and the Lord is thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land, when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in the year. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with eleven. Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of Passover be left until the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not settle a kid in his mother's milk. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words. For after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables of the words of the covenant. The Ten Commandments. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mountain, that Moses visited Moses with not that the skin of his face shone while he walked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid, come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And after all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And till Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which is, was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face until he went in to speak with him. You understand? Moses talked with God personally. You know, you read the New Testament, they talk about the veil, the veil, the veil. The, the people back then, they couldn't see Moses correctly, they couldn't see God. And it's still that same veil now. The same veil as old people here. You understand? God gives specific instructions. He don't want you to be like the people. He don't want you to go hard after other gods. And that covers a huge array of things. He don't want you to be like the other lands. It's a simple instruction. You don't think the, the God of the uh, Old Testament is the God of the New Testament? Well, let's see. Let's show you. Let's go to 1 John. Let's go to 1 John. Let's see how close and similar they are. Let's see how they are the same. Let's see how nothing has changed from then. Let's see. People love to say it's not the same, God. Whatever. The words are the same. The words are the same. First epistle of John. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. We have seen from the beginning. He's talking about the beginning of their life. He's talking about the beginning. They believe. For the life was manifest and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. He just told you some examples of walking in darkness, me doing like the people of the land do, going to whoring after other gods and all these other things. And that's what we're supposed to tear down their groves and tear down their trees. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So be careful of them people that swear they never sinned. 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Go back to the Old Testament. God has been a forgiving God from the beginning. That which was from the beginning. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not with us. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. Hmm. Where them commandments come from? The Old Testament. For all these people that swear it's a different God or a different Lord. It's all the same. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that said, if I know him and keep him not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Hmm. But Jesus died for our sins so we can do what we want to do. I think not. But whoso keeping his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abided from him, ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. I write no new commandment for you, but an old commandment. In the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hate of his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goes, because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. You for his name's sake. I write unto you, Father, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. The word of God. What's the word of God? Everything over here. You can't just believe one part and not believe the rest. Love not the world, not the things that are in the world. Hmm. This is going to break it down big time. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The world does it. The world does these things. The world goes a whoring after other gods, so let us do it too. I don't think so. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The will of God. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written it to you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Most Muslims don't believe that Jesus is the Christ. So who are they? Antichrist. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same, the same hath the Father, not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. Let that, that therefore embody you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as have taught you, you shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have come for confidence and not be ashamed before him and his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. If that ain't self-explanatory, I don't know what it is, people. How many times he got to say the beginning? How many times does John have to say the beginning? The beginning. The Lord is the same Lord from the beginning. If you abide in him, you keep his words, you keep his commandments, you keep his statutes. It's a self-explanatory. No lie is of God. Okay, people, no lie is of God. All right, can I go back again? I like talking about Christmas, 
because people try to rectify themselves by believing a lie. And no lie is of God. Okay, we got to make this day Christ's birthday. That's a complete lie. That is a lie. We're going to make it about Jesus. That's a lie. No lie is of God. Whoever love of and make of a lie is not of God. You understand? I don't know who started it. I guess the Catholic Church back in the day. Hey, the pagans doing that. Hey, let's let's do something so the, uh, stop the Christians from doing what the pagans do by making a day for the exact same day that they do their worship. We're going to do ours. And we're going to put Christ's name on it. So it, it'll be a differentiation. How in the world is that a differentiation? That's just a people pleaser. You understand? Instead of overthrowing the altars and destroying those idolistic things, those trees and all this stuff, we embrace them. And we're going to put God's stamp on it. You can't put God's stamp on nothing. You're just a man. You understand? One thing about pagan practices, they've been around. One thing about all this stuff, it's been around. What happened was, the world wanted to blend. The world loves to blend. The church at that time loved to blend. They didn't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Let's make our worship day on Sunday. So we can be like the rest of them. So we can all gather on the same day. Huh? That makes no sense. That makes no sense. If God wants you to be different from the world, why do we do the things that the world asks of us? Now, let me break this down. What does a whoring mean in regards to the word? The God, God gives you the Ten Commandments. He gives you his commandments. And he can focus, focus it on his commandments. You understand? There is sin that leads to death. But there is sin that can be prayed about the Ten Commandments if you don't understand what blasphemy against the Holy Spirit truly means I would advise you to study the Ten I would advise you to study the Ten because in them I guarantee you you get the answer to what truly is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit the Ten are important it's over and over again they reiterate the Ten but they reiterate the ten by love your neighbor as yourself. And guess what? That came from the Old Testament. Love everyone. You sum up the ten with love. You love people and you want to take them away from the fire. If you love somebody, that's like if you love somebody, right? And you see them rolling around and on fire. You love them enough to say, it's okay. And let them burn. Is that love? I don't think so. Love tries to take people away from the fire instead of standing ironly by watching as they burn. Well, I've been to sit on fire before. And guess what? Somebody that ironly stood by and watched me burn. I'm going to tell you what kind of love that is. That's not love. Love is trying to save people. Pulling them out of the flames. You pull them out of the flames by telling them the truth. Not by hiding them. Not by keeping that veil over their head. Oh, it's okay. The Lord forgives sin. He said, I will not hold him. I will. Their, their guilt will be repaid. You understand? And he, he said it again. I will visit the iniquity of the, of the fathers and the mothers and to the children. To the 34th generation. You see why a lot of things, a lot of chains have been broken because, guess what? People just keep doing it. And they wonder why no change is taking place in the land. You know, I talked about this yesterday uh, over the weekend. You understand? A stiff-necked people. What stiff-necked mean? That's another another word for hard-headed. Well, if you read the New Testament, he'll say, I gave them over, I gave them strong delusions so that they will believe a lie. So look at this word. Most people in the strong delusion to believe a lie. If somebody puts a if a man puts his stamp on it, I guess that makes it right. Even in the Old Testament, I just read, he just told you what feast days to could we keep. Don't you think Christ, don't you think the Lord, don't you think the Holy Spirit would have told us what days to keep with all these specific instructions that the Lord gives? Do you think the Lord would be specific in what days he want to give you? He was so specific in how he wanted the tabernacle made. He was so specific in his instructions in regards to anybody. His instructions are clear. 
They are clear. You understand? It's very specific. When you go into the land, you tear down what's not his. And you don't take it to your dwelling places. It's not his. Why am I focused on Christmas so much? Because I'm trying to get this to your head. It's not his. They can put a name on it, but it's not his. Not once. Everything the Lord wanted us to observe has been since the beginning. So, what he told them, you teach the traditions of men by making my traditions no. All right, you can, you can celebrate Christmas, but you can't celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Why? What you call that doing? That's making his tradition, God's tradition, God's feast null and void because we're so busy trying to do what the world does. And God said, I want you to call you from out of the world. So as you get called from out of the world, you start making changes in your life that lines up with Christ. And he said, you're perfect? No. He said, we all sin. But you got to understand, there is a sin that leads to death. Can I keep breaking that down? You think going to whore after other gods is not a sin that can't lead to death? Well, we know that's a fact that it can lead to death. What happened to the children of Israel when they went to Horg after that golden calf and tried to make a day for the Lord that wasn't ordained by the Lord? Man can't change the Lord. They can't change the Sabbath to Sunday. They can't, to the first day of the week. They can't do that. No man can. No man can change it. But as you can see through our history, they have a way of just changing things. Man cannot change God. God changes man. Do you understand? God changes man. We can't change what God has put in place. You understand? God offered the sacrifice so we didn't have to offer sacrifices anymore. In the, in the form of his son, Jesus Christ. You see, the Muslim faith is built around the fact that Jesus was just a prophet. It was not the son of God. So, all those Muslims that believe that Christ is not the Christ, just a prophet, what are they? Antichrist. Antichrist. They'll fight you up and down tooth and nail about that. Well, the word talks about it. And the word is true. You can't have one without the other. You understand? He's a jealous God. A jealous one. Jealous Lord. The Holy Spirit is jealous. He said nobody, no person in the Holy Spirit calls Christ accursed. You understand? You got to know the Father and the Son. I know people trying to, people want different types of word from me. I can only give you what I read. Do you understand? Let me pause for a second. I will continue.